In terms of its production history, one of the most interesting stories in Doctor Who's entire nearly 60 year history is The Enemy Within, aka the 1996 TV movie, which is a BBC and 20th Century Fox co-production. It was a 20th Century Fox TV movie that was meant to be a backdoor pilot to a whole brand new era of the show if it did well. It did really, really well in the UK. However, in America, its primary market, it got beaten in the ratings because it was an episode of Roseanne where John Goodman's character suffered a fatal heart attack and that was the big massive TV event of the year. So it was a victim of bad timing. But in terms of its production history, it's a fascinating time capsule of 1990s TV and Doctor Who during the wilderness years and we're getting a behind the scenes in-depth look at it by the end of this year. This is a story from Variety who broke it, this is an exclusive from them. Doctor Who Am I documentary about BBC Time Lord snapped up by Kaleidoscope Film Distribution. Award-winning Doctor Who documentary Doctor Who Am I has been snapped up by Kaleidoscope Film Distribution Variety can exclusively reveal. Kaleidoscope are set to release Doctor Who Am I theatrically in the UK in October and are also repping international sales. Materials will be available to view at the Toronto International Film Festival next month. Marking Vanessa Yule's directorial debut, the, do the documentary feature tells the story of the infamous TV movie, which was produced during a gap in the TV series. It featured Paul McGann as the Time Lord, but received uh, disapprobation from fans who were apparently unhappy at the suggestion the Doctor was half human, especially when he kissed his assistant Grace Holloway. Matthew Jacobs wrote the standalone Doctor Who film, and in Doctor Who Am I, he reluctantly allows himself to be drawn back into the time period to examine the making of the production as well as the reaction it inspired. Jacobs co-directs the documentary, while McGann also features alongside other members of the original cast, including Eric Roberts and Daphne Ashbrook. Um, so, we at Kaleidoscope are delighted to be working with Matthew and Vanessa on this fabulous film, etc, etc. We're a small movie with a big heart, and Kaleidoscope saw that right away, etc, uh, etc. Et so, this is dropping in October. It's going to be getting a theatrical release, presumably a limited re uh, theatrical release, uh, over the coming months. And that seems really, really interesting, that it's actually getting a proper uh, behind-the-scenes treatment for theatres for the, uh, the centenary of the BBC. I don't think it's actually going to be released related or tied into the BBC centenary celebrations, but it's a nice coincidence all the same. I'm going to be going out on a limb here, and I'm going to be doing a bit of a, a wild and wacky prediction, okay? Oh, Mr. Tardis with his wacky predictions. I think that the release of this is going to be accompanied by a home media re-release of the TV movie. I have no sources for this. I have nothing going except my gut instinct. And if you know me in person, you'll know that that is quite a sizable instinct. So I think that what's going to happen is towards the end of the year, maybe there'll be a BFI screening for Doctor Who Am I? Maybe a double feature with the TV movie. And hopefully, for my steelbook loving heart, a, a, a like a steelbook release. Maybe uh, like on one disc is a 4K restoration of the TV movie or something. And on the other disc is Doctor Who Am I in a really cool packaging. Dan Ben, the uh, movie is already on DVD and Blu-ray. So were the Peter Cushing Dalek movies. Or at least, like I think Dalek Invasion Earth 2150 AD had a steelbook release you can re-release them that's fine it's it will be in like in a collector's edition still book release or whatever they, they can re-release these things that's absolutely fine that's not an issue that is not an obstacle in this day and age and i'm sure that they would sell out pretty pretty quickly uh so this wouldn't this isn't like a bbc thing as far as i'm aware i i, I want to know the production company behind this because kaleidoscope film distribution are the distributors but who is actually the production company behind doctor who am i um let's have a look documentary here we go international documentary association uh do 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 because if you go on this website ida 40 international documentary association here we go website oh it's a facebook page Super professional. Here we go. DoctorWhoAmI.com. Oh, and DoctorWhoAmI.com just takes you back to the Facebook page. That's terrific. So, yeah, is who is the production company behind this? I demand an explanation, goddammit. An award-winning documentary. So this is, by the looks of it, to have been independently put together by uh, a Los Angeles film group. 
I'm presuming. But, you know, they were still able to get international distribution uh, through Kaleidoscope Pictures. Dr. Fanjay, the problem with the original film footage is functionally inaccessible, so it would just be a plain up to go to the DVD version rather than January 4K. Uh, functionally inaccessible. What, is it, what do you mean by functionally inaccessible? Is it in a Raiders of the Lost Ark box or is it is it under lock and key? I'm curious what is it what it is about it that makes it functionally inaccessible. Um like it, it, is that like, who cares? Maybe they AI upscale it. A man can dream. Am I right? A man can dream. Uh Timothy Quill, I have a soft spot in my heart for the eight doctor. I'd like to see that happen too. I think that'd be really, really cool to do, especially after the Peter Cushing films got uh Steelbook and uh, Collector's Editions versions got released through the BFI quite a few months ago and through Canal Studios. I think because you've got those, then it's absolutely on the table for them to do a re-release or something else. I think that would be a really cool thing to do. I know the TV movie has already had a Blu-ray release. I don't own it. I have no idea what type of uh, picture quality it is or what they've done on that blu-ray set but i yeah i it would make sense to do it and i'm sure if you had like a bfi type screening for this film it would sell out for fans i'm i'm absolutely sure that that would be the case don't you find jay because the bbc's alliance in for the dvd covers long enough to include the current bb copy be interested to know what's up with the footage our council the doctor who i might think is comes off to me as rather sketchy as though it's something a fan announced that will never happen well look it, it the fact that it's picked up international distribution from kaleidoscope film distribution which is a, like a legit like big name distributor company and it is going to be getting play at the toronto international film festival next month shows that it's it is legit like you don't get like some sort of sketchy fan campaign that takes the money and runs and then it gets into the toronto international film festival clearly something is like genuine and legit about this project so uh, i i wish the the team all the best i am looking forward to seeing this when this comes out in october and yeah more paul mcgann is always a good thing and i also think that the making of the tv movie there's that book i think it's called regeneration and it is by matthew jacobs i think but it's a book from like the t early 2000s or the late 90s and it's a massive hardback tome and it's it's uh it, it's like it's very expensive to get pre-owned let me try actually find out how much it is one second i'll find a copy on ebay real quick dr fan jay simply meant that they don't even know who is the legal owner of the footage now let alone where it's actually been stored oh uh i'm sure money can exchange hands i'm sure the bbc can can work something a man can dream okay we'll figure it out it, yeah regeneration by philip siegel yeah oh here we go yes yeah, you can get it on eBay for $77 or around £60. So there's definitely a price gap here. Uh, Doctor Regeneration by Philip Siegel and Gary Russell, the story behind the revival of a television legend. Apparently, this is a really, really good book. It's just quite expensive and it's out of print. <laughs> but yeah, so being able to see um how the how the film was made and being able to get people like paul mcgann and um and daphne ashbrook and the master himself eric roberts on board that's really really cool i'm looking forward to seeing uh how this all comes out Callum Stack, the TV movie is such an interesting piece of Doctor Who, it's flawed, but I think it's a blast, and Paul McGann is sublime in it, he owns the damn thing. Oh yeah, it, it's, I think he is the best part in it, and we can look back on it with a bit more positivity, because we now know that that wasn't Doctor Who's final outing, and it wasn't the show's ultimate fate. If that was, like, the last piece of Doctor Who ever, I can understand people being, like, really, really resentful of the TV movie. But because without the TV movie, we probably wouldn't have had the 2005 revival. We, we can owe it a debt of gratitude. But the fact that uh, um, it was made, I think, with passion, but slightly misplaced. I did a, a whole live stream like a year ago, reacting and reading through the, the Leakly Bible. The plans that they had for the series, I don't think would have been very good. Um, but it's still fascinating nonetheless. It was made by people who cared. It was just the fact that the people who cared were in the American TV system where you have to make everything about daddy issues you have to make everything be a mystery and tie back to per to parents and family and you have to uh you have to take the name of the, of all of the stories like the tomb of the cybermen and genesis of the daleks but you have to have to mix it up and kind of understand what made them so interesting in the first place it's it's really interesting i i'm just glad that we can look at it as that was just a weird chapter in doctor who history there's the great quote from russell t davis when he was wanting to include a line i think in the end of time 
when he said, oh, like, uh, he said something about maybe being half human. Uh, he says, oh, I was half, like, uh, no, no, I'm full-time Lord, on, apart from that one New Year's Eve in 1999 when I was half human, but I got over it like a 24-hour cold. He decided to not get, he decided to not keep that line in because he thought it's still Doctor Who, it still counts, and I don't want to be seen uh, crapping on it. So I'll take the line out, but it's still a, a really funny, uh, it's still a really funny way to uh, to view it. Tom Mason, where did you get the Bible from? I can't remember. I think someone sent me it. Um, I think, yeah, I think it was like on a Google Drive. If you Google it, you might be able to find it. I can't remember how I got it, though. I don't even know if I still have it. I think I don't, yeah, I don't think I have it anymore. Sean Kelly, have you done a review of the TV movie yet? No, I have not, no. That's, that's for another day. TV Valkyrie made it the enemy within is the friends we made along the way. True. 